August 2025. The James Webb Space Telescope flags a pattern in its data. At first, a faint rhythm most would miss. A quiet anomaly that shouldn't exist. Experts pore over the numbers. The signal doesn't match any comet, asteroid, or known cosmic phenomenon. Its structure is too exact, too repetitive, almost engineered. Within days, a strange object, 3i slash Atlas, is confirmed, not local, but interstellar, its orbit impossible to explain by chance. Then comes the chemical shock, pure carbon dioxide, no water, no carbon monoxide, like nothing science has ever seen. As classified web sessions go dark, global authorities scramble behind the scenes. So what exactly did the James Webb Telescope just alert the world to? And why do so many scientists suddenly seem afraid to speak? Raw data from the James Webb Space Telescope rarely leaves room for imagination. Yet in the first week of August 2025, an unnamed technician noticed a flicker, an odd repeating motif buried in the NIR spec detector frames. Not a spike, not a cosmic ray, but a pattern. At first, it looked like calibration noise. A faint pulse, measured in exact intervals, whispering across the infrared spectrum. The timestamp read August 6, 2025. By protocol, all anomalies are logged, flagged, and rerun through the reduction pipeline. But this one refused to vanish. Every recalibration, every artifact check, still there. Within hours, a second analyst, working the late shift, ran the numbers again. The repetition was undeniable. The signal symmetry and spacing didn't match known instrument errors or solar interference. It lined up with none of the standard cometry lines. No water vapor, no carbon monoxide, just a persistent rhythm embedded in the carbon dioxide channel, like a metronome ticking in the void. The pattern's regularity drew in more eyes. By the end of the week, three staffers in two agencies had quietly compared notes. They found the same structure in every exposure, across multiple slits and IFU configurations. The intervals weren't random. They landed on whole seconds, repeating with mechanical precision. Not a single cosmic source in the JWST archive had ever shown this kind of rhythmic order. As the object's coordinates were pinned down, questions multiplied. Was this a new kind of comet or something entirely different? The raw frames, still unreleased to the public, became a source of quiet alarm among Webb's data custodians. The numbers told a story no one was ready to explain. On July 1, 2025, the Atlas Telescope in Chile registered a new object moving against the background stars. The minor planet center flagged its orbit as hyperbolic, unbound, coming from beyond the solar system. The initial designation, 3i slash Atlas, only the third confirmed interstellar visitor in recorded history. Unlike the elongated mystery of Oumuamua or the icy cyanide-laced path of Borisov, this object arrived with a different set of rules entirely. Dr. Lin, a dynamic orbital analyst from the MPC, led the verification effort. She compared fresh Atlas images to pre-discovery frames from TESS and ZTF, tracing the object's journey as far back as mid-June. Each data point narrowed the trajectory, inbound velocity, solar approach angle, and a perihelion set for late October, deep inside Mars's orbit. The numbers told a clear story. 3i slash Atlas wasn't bound to the Sun. Its eccentricity was greater than one, a mathematical signature that guaranteed it would never return. The object's path wasn't just unbound, it was precise. The entry vector aligned within a fraction of a degree of the solar system's ecliptic plane. Statisticians at the MPC ran simulations. For a truly random interstellar body, such a perfect alignment should happen less than once in hundreds of arrivals. Yet here it was, threading the solar system's midline like a needle. Dr. Lin's team ruled out gravitational assists and solar system origins. The object was moving too fast, too straight, and on a course that made planetary capture impossible. But the biggest surprise came when the team calculated the size. Early brightness estimates suggested a body nearly 46 kilometers across, far larger than either of its interstellar predecessors. Not a pebble, not a snowball, but a minor world crossing the void. 
Dr. Lin's summary was concise. Hyperbolic, inbound, and active. We're witnessing something we've never seen before. The confirmation set off a chain reaction. Every major observatory turned its attention to the newcomer. But as the first spectra arrived, the mystery only deepened. The chemistry refused to match expectations, and the question shifted from where 3 i atlas came from to what it actually was. Comets are supposed to wake up with water. At six astronomical units from the Sun, well beyond Jupiter's orbit, solar heat is weak and typical cometary activity barely stirs. But the first spectra from JWST and Spherix told a different story. The only thing rising from 3 i atlas was carbon dioxide, no water vapor, no carbon monoxide, not even a trace. Just a single sharp CO2 line burning through the infrared, an order of magnitude above the most extreme solar system outliers. Astronomers ran the numbers twice, then a third time. The ratios didn't shift. Dr. Anders, a senior spectroscopist at ESA, described it as bizarre, almost surgical. In every exposure, the CO2 signature dominated. H2O lines, normally the brightest feature for any comet inside 6AU, were buried in the noise. CO, the usual backup, was equally absent. The chemistry wasn't just unusual, it was uncharted. No known comet, interstellar or local, had ever displayed this kind of exclusive outgassing. The established models, sublimation curves, volatile release thresholds, couldn't account for it. Even the most exotic formation scenarios struggle to explain a body this large, this active, venting only CO2 so far from the sun. The anomaly triggered a scramble for answers. Teams at NASA and ESA reprocessed the raw frames, checking for instrument artifacts, pipeline quirks, or background contamination. Every test came back clean. SphereX's independent observations, taken days later, confirmed the same result. Carbon dioxide, and nothing else. Dr. Anders's internal note circulated quietly among the project leads. If this is a comet, it's the strangest one we've ever seen. The question wasn't just what powered 3 i atlas but what could possibly suppress every other expected molecule, and why the object seemed engineered to keep its secrets locked in a single spectral line. August 6, 2025. The James Webb Space Telescope completed a scheduled NIR spec session on 3i Atlas, but what happened next never made it to the public archive. Instead of the usual pipeline release, the files vanished behind a restricted access wall. The official logs show a gap, no thumbnails, no quick look spectra, just a cryptic placeholder. For days, requests for the data returned only an error code, no explanation. Inside Issei's operations center, a mid-level data custodian, anonymous in every leak, flagged a set of internal memos. They described an embargo on all imaging products tied to the August session. The justification, unverified anomalies in the spatial structure of the comet's coma. The language was careful, almost clinical, but the details were anything but routine. According to the leak, the raw infrared images revealed a nearly perfect, concentric halo of carbon dioxide emission, symmetrical to the limit of the instrument's point spread function. No tails, no jets, nothing to break the pattern. Just a luminous ring centered on a core that burned hotter than the surrounding coma. The internal report compared the structure to synthetic models, searching for natural explanations, fragmentation, solar wind shaping, even rare outburst geometries. None fit. The symmetry held in every exposure, regardless of slit orientation or dither pattern. And at the center, the infrared brightness spiked well above what solar heating alone could explain. No water vapor, no carbon monoxide, just a single stubborn line. The custodian's flagged memo ended with a question. Why would a comet vent only carbon dioxide, and why would the emission form a flawless shell around an internal hotspot? No public statement followed. The embargo remained. For the first time since Webb's commissioning, a major target's images were missing from the archive, sealed, according to rumor, by a handful of login badges and a digital chain of custody that led straight to the top of the mission's data team. A shadow, thin as a filament, swept across the core of 3i-atlas in the JWST's deepest frames. 
Not a dust lane, not a jet, but a straight, rotating band of darkness, visible only in the mid-infrared, flickering with each exposure. Analysts at ESA first suspected a processing glitch, but the shadow's position shifted with the object's rotation, always tracing the same axis, always perfectly linear. No natural comet had ever cast its own shadow this way. Material scientists weighed in. For a shadow to persist through the coma, the body beneath must be more than porous ice. It would need a shell, dense enough to block infrared, yet thin enough to let carbon dioxide vent through. The numbers pointed to a hollow, possibly metallic core, wrapped in a masking layer. The geometry was too clean for fractured rock. Lensing simulations ran overnight, testing every known mineral and dust configuration. None could match the observed pattern. Dr. Rami, a planetary engineer, proposed an unsettling scenario. If the nucleus was hollow, the shadow could be cast by internal machinery, structural ribs, or even a rotating scaffold beneath the surface. The carbon dioxide halo, so uniform in every frame, might be engineered to cloak the real body, diffusing heat and masking spectral signatures. The object's mass estimates, based on brightness and outgassing, left room for a vast internal cavity. Not a comet, but a shell, an asteroid repurposed for travel, its true purpose hidden behind a manufactured veil. Each new exposure made the case harder to ignore. The shadow's clockwork rotation, the shell-like emission, the absence of water, all lined up with the theory of an engineered interstellar craft. In the data, the story was written not in light, but in the absence of it, a mechanical secret turning in the dark. Dr. Malik, a specialist in time series astrophysics, was called in to analyze the web data. Her first step was to break the infrared signal into discrete bursts, mapping each intensity spike against the clock. The result was a sequence that defied natural explanation. Instead of the messy, stochastic flicker of cometry outgassing, the pulses landed on intervals of 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11 seconds, prime numbers marching upward in perfect order. In the language of physics, randomness is king. But here, the rhythm was algorithmic, as if composed. The object's diameter, 46 kilometers, only deepened the puzzle. Natural interstellar bodies of this size are rare, but not impossible. What is nearly impossible is the trajectory. Dr. Malik's simulation, run on the Minor Planet Center's supercluster, showed a 1 in 500 chance for an object to enter the solar system almost perfectly along the ecliptic plane. Not just passing through, but slicing through the planetary disk like a probe on a planned survey. The numbers refused to cooperate with coincidence. Prime number pulses and improbable alignment, two flags in a row. Malik's report, circulated to a handful of senior astronomers, listed one more anomaly. The pulse sequence wasn't static. Over the course of three weeks, the timing shifted in discrete steps. Phase 1, simple pulses. Phase 2, paired bursts. By August, the object had entered Phase 3, a five-group pattern repeating every 283 seconds. Five phases in total, the memo warned, with the current cycle ticking down toward a calculated endpoint. The implication was chilling, not just a signal, but a countdown, and the world, for now, was listening in the dark. Orders moved faster than rumor. By noon on August 7th, internal access to all web and spherex data streams was cut to a skeleton crew. Routine logins failed. Outside researchers found themselves locked out, redirected to generic maintenance notices. The Minor Planet Center's live feed for 3 ma i slash atlas flickered, then dropped to a static summary. Even the usual public dashboards, archival spectra, comet tracking, went dark. Officially, nothing was wrong. Unofficially, a new directive had landed on every agency desk. All data pertaining to the object classified under technological unknowns. Inside the Pentagon, Colonel Reyes took point. Her background was orbital threat assessment, not astronomy, but the urgency was unmistakable. By 1600 hours, the US Space Force had greenlit a rapid launch. The X-37B, a reusable military space plane, was prepped for its OTV-9 mission. No press, no webcast, just a silent ascent from Cape Canaveral. Its flight path was altered mid-course, 
arcing toward the Mars, Earth corridor where 31I slash Atlas would soon pass. No payload manifest was released, no public statement followed. For the first time, the world's most advanced telescopes were pointed at a visitor, and the world itself was locked outside the room. Course corrections are not supposed to happen in deep space, yet in late August, orbital fitters at the International Astrometry Consortium logged a series of subtle deviations in 3 i atlases trajectory, tiny kinks, impossible to blame on solar wind or outgassing jets. Professor Santos, a specialist in non-gravitational dynamics, ran the numbers three times. The object's path was adjusting itself, as if responding to unseen cues. Each correction nudged it closer to the Mars, Earth corridor, following a route no comet should know. Meanwhile, Dr. Vale, a molecular systems analyst, pored over the emission data. The infrared pulses, already strange, began to reveal a deeper pattern. Ratios between peak intensities mapped onto sequences found in DNA's helix-turn-helix -helix motifs, 3, 4, then 7. Not random, not noise. Vale's algorithms flagged the match, and the lab's internal chat lit up with nervous speculation. During these same windows, the Deep Space Network suffered three unexplained dropouts. Legacy probes, Voyager, Pioneer, went silent for minutes at a time, always as 3i slash Atlas crossed their line of sight. Engineers blamed solar weather, but the timing was too precise, too consistent. The object wasn't just moving, it was adapting, signaling, and, by every sign, watching back. Twelve hours and three minutes, always the same interval, always at the edge of the hydrogen line. That's where the anonymous analyst found the first echo. Not a random pulse, but a precise recurrence buried in the noise, repeating with a patience that no natural process could maintain. The analyst, a specialist in digital signal extraction, ran the autocorrelation three ways. Every time, the peak landed at the same mark, 12 hours and three minutes. The hydrogen line is the universe's calling card, shared by radio astronomers, SETI, and anyone searching for a universal language. But this wasn't just a beacon. When the pulse trains were mapped, a secondary pattern emerged. Each burst, in its timing and wavelength, plotted a sequence that, when decoded, traced a crude but unmistakable overlay. The Triangulum Galaxy, M33, looped back to Earth's position. The analyst's final note was terse. Pattern is deliberate, not noise, not artifact. In the history of astronomical detection, no comet, asteroid, or interstellar visitor has ever written its own map in the noise.